when you paint? Do you find yourself doing anything to try and capture things that are not immediately visible? Yeah, it's strange. The more you paint, the more you do start to see things, like especially colour that you might not have seen otherwise. If you look at a lot of really good paintings, like Sargent, they have like bright purple or something in, in, the, in the shadows where it's been illuminated, but it's not there in real life, obviously. It looks really representational and realistic, but you know it can't be. That's very interesting. It makes me think about the special isotopes that we introduce into our yeah. proteins to make them visible. And as a result of that, we can pinpoint a lot of molecular detail yeah. that we would never be able to yeah. see in real life. One thing we were talking about before was, in terms of common methodology, was about creativity and trying to yeah. think in several dimensions. I think when you said about how you get rid of dimensions in order to see different results, I assume that you're not thinking like X, Y and Z. It is. I mean, it is like X, Y and Z. I and mean, when you were describing to me the different dimensions in which you're supposed to be yeah. triangulating every one of yeah. my features and angles and all that, that did make me think a lot about yeah. the way we can deduce the unique three-dimensional mm. structure, for example, of a protein, which is one of the mechanistic machines that are, are keeping mm. our body healthy and doing all the different jobs we have to do. Your three dimensions, can you just tell me what they were again? You have, like I mean, in, yeah, it's, it's weird when you say, you know, you've got to break down time because and when you're painting someone, they don't stay still. So, you know, I might have drawn your hair from half an hour ago and your mouth from three seconds ago. It still works, even though you're really having to compress it down into those two dimensions. I think because we're so used to seeing humans, we find it really hard to switch visually. As there's this theory about the reason why, you know, people always draw a line is because you're so fixated on the object, which is why you could tell a human face from a curly line and two dots. You know, our eye doesn't see an eye. Our eye just sees lots of different tone and light put together, and those are interpreted by our brain. I found a lot of parallels in what you were yeah. saying with what we do, because essentially you're trying to, to reconcile something that you know very well, but to see it in a different way such that you can then represent yeah. it realistically. Whereas with us, we don't really know what we're going yeah. to see. Sometimes we do, because you can predict it and we can gather all different mm. kinds of experimental data. When you were using that mirror and mm. your phone to condense the three dimensions into two, we sometimes collect a, a three-dimensional NMR data set. We can compress it in one dimension exactly as you were doing, mm. and then we know whether we've got enough information or at least whether we can rely on the information we yeah. have to produce the final three-dimensional outcome. I guess we're working in the opposite direction in a way, like you've, yeah. you're, you've got a finished product and you're going all the way back to basics. Yeah, and then, breaking it down to then refine it. Whereas we're starting from nothing and then trying to build up yeah. a picture based on behaviour. I mean, it's never that you have an exact finished painting in your head, well, I don't anyway, but I have a rough idea of how I wanted to capture something. And that's the more it becomes into fruition, the more it changes to the point where it might not be anything like that at all. We have a thing called the limited palette here, which we use. And with those three colours, you can mix an entire skin range. Because you have such a limitation at the beginning, you really know the limits of each pigment and each paint. Whereas if you start with a full palette, you're kind of inundated with so much colour yeah. and information that you don't really know what to do. Yeah, I think we'll see, everything you describe is, is chemistry, essentially. Yeah. That's what people are trying to do to, you know, to fight cancer. Like mm. They know a drug that interacts with something and then they want to add something on that might make it interact more tightly yeah. or more specifically. And, you know, there are a lot of parallels with what you're describing. Yeah, it's always a slow increase, yeah. a slow change as opposed to any major changes. It's, I mean, maybe, you know, there are eureka moments, but I'm not a huge believer in them. I mm. think the standing on the shoulders of giants is a more realistic interpretation of yeah. what's going on.